joining in today? Yeah? You're a little teddy bear, aren't you? So. You know when like tea's just watery, water tea? That's what this is. It just like, doesn't taste of anything. But the real question on everyone's minds is, who would win a fight between a badger and a monkey? Dance, dance, dance. It's like, bonjour Denise, would you like a McFlurry? Don't eat my cheese. <laughs> I hope that you're all doing really well. This is a video that like, okay, you don't need to hear about this, but I made it, I didn't like it, so I have come back. I really want to talk about a show that I've recently seen and it's The Boy in the Dress and oh my goodness. The Boy in the Dress has shaken me. It's just so fantastic. It's full of energy, full of enthusiasm, but it holds and it's underlined with such an important message of acceptance and of being yourself that I just feel like it's one of those shows that I want everyone to see. So I'm hoping that this might convince you. Honestly, this show is like, I, I don't really know how to convey my love for it without just talking about it. So that's what I'm gonna do. It was written by David Walliams and the stage adaptation was written by Mark Ravenhill. So David Walliams, this is the first of his works that I've actually seen on stage. I've heard of Gangster Granny, Billionaire Boy, but I've never really seen a musical from him. And honestly, it just, it was so wholesome, so nurturing. Please don't say you want to go out. I'll be right back. Oh, we're back. Also, I almost just like slipped over, so fun times. Uh, where was I? Right, yes, The Boy in the Dress is so nurturing, so wholesome, but there's something for everyone. And I am really looking forward to seeing David Walliams' works in the future because he does talk about topical themes, especially with this day and age. And I'm totally there for it, especially in children's books. I think it's important for children to be introduced to different orientations and different family lifestyles. I just feel like I need to get into why I love it and why you guys should go. The Boy in the Dress is about a 12 year old boy called Dennis and he lives with his dad and his older brother, John who loves magnums and his mum left when he was younger. Dennis has two main passions. He loves football but he absolutely loves fashion and he meets this girl called Lisa James and there's no one as beautiful as Lisa James but she also picks up that Dennis loves fashion and she's a fashion designer. She invites him over to her house, she shows him some fashion pieces that she's made but she particularly shows him this orange sequin dress and she convinces Dennis to try it on. So Dennis tries on the dress, he has this alter ego called Denise. Lisa introduces is Denise to her friends and says that Denise is a French exchange student and she will be joining Lisa James in school on Monday. Everyone finds out that Denise is actually Dennis and they all call him the boy in the dress and everything sort of pans out from there. So Dennis has to choose whether he will stick to his beliefs and be true to himself or whether he will go under the line of the code of conduct and he will take part in the football match for Elm Forest School. I also quickly want to talk about the pairing, like the god tier of music, Robbie Williams and Guy Chambers. Robbie Williams and Guy Chambers, they have worked previously together. I really love Guy Chambers' works. He has worked on Finding Nemo, Love Actually, but then he's also worked with Hilary Duff and Natasha Bedingfield, Will Young, and of course Robbie Williams on different albums. So he's very experienced, as well as Robbie Williams, in the music field and the industry. But I really love how they've implemented so much into this soundtrack. They've introduced a lot of repetition in the soundtrack of The Boy in the Dress and it's really important messages and there are really important messages that stick with you. I'm really hoping with the budget and considering it's an RSC production, I'm really hoping that there is a soundtrack in the pipeline because I would totally download it and I would never stop listening to it. <laughs> dance 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 Alita Collins who did the choreography now she is like she's done some royal ballet work before she's quite up there um Alita I really adored her choreography especially in, like disco symphony it was like this really big sequence but then it was also down to the choreography of the football matches and how it was done and the props so they had a ball on the stick basically and the choreography of that was just so sharp and quick but it really showed the progression of the game and the progression of like the match 
and it was just really cleverly done. I also really want to hint on the Stratford upon Avon Theatre. So the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, which is in Stratford, obviously, because I said it's in Stratford upon Avon. Uh, the Royal Shakespeare Theatre is beautiful outside and inside, and it's just filled with history. There was just so many cool activities for the children and adults to get involved with, and it kind of opened that discussion of diversity. And especially for intervals, it can be quite a long time, so it was really good to like keep everyone engaged and keep everyone talking about the show. Can I also say there was a gift shop? They had a gift shop, but the gift shop held a lot of merchandise, not just from The Boy in the Dress, but previous shows that they've done, and Shakespeare, and just about Stratford in general. So I also want to talk about how you can get cheap seats at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, or the Royal Shakespeare Company uh, productions, because there are many ways you can do it. So myself and my friend Beth, we decided to get £5 tickets for 16 to 25 year olds. So if you're in that age bracket, you can become a member for free, can I just emphasize for free and you can get tickets to the theatre for five pounds. So I booked them and I was like, right. I said to Beth, these might not be the best seats in the world, but they're a fiver, so they're a steal. So we went the first evening and we sat on the side and we were flabbergasted because the seats were so good. The view was really clear. There was a little bit of restricted view, but again, it was a fiver. But the view was just, like, the faces were clear, you could see every expression, you felt like you were part of the numbers almost. And then on the second day we sat at the back of the stools and I was like, it might be a bit different, it might be okay. It was exactly the same. It was such a stunning view. There was the overhang, but luckily with the boy in the dress, there isn't really much going on at the top. The top is very similar. The only thing I think we missed on the first night was, like, the disco balls hanging down and like just little elements like that but it didn't feel like we were missing anything that was significant however the boy in the dress have also announced that they are doing rush tickets for the following week so if you are planning to see the boy in the dress maybe next week or the week after check out their rush program because they are offering seats for 10 and 20 pounds but it just makes theatre accessible for everyone and if i can encourage any of you to go and see this show i really want to so please go and take the advantage of rush and go and take advantage of the 16 to 25 year old tickets the five pound seats i believe there's literally a handful left i looked it up the other night and there was like one weekend left and there was two seats for the saturday so if you want to go bag them please go and enjoy this beautiful show oh my god that rhymed i'm a rhymer not a rhymer that's ruined it I'm a um, literary person, never mind, okay. And everyone's a winner with cheap tickets, am I right? I don't think front of house teams are mentioned enough, especially when it comes to reviews and talking about shows. But the Stratford or the Royal Shakespeare Theatre front of house team were so lovely. They were so welcoming and they just kind of took care of everyone. One funny bit though, we went to the cloak room because I had my backpack and <laughs> the gentleman there was like, oh hi again, you're back. I just don't think front of house teams are mentioned enough and they are just as important as the cast and crew in my opinion. And that my friends is the tea. So the set was very similar to David Wallin's books. They actually used the illustrations from the original novel to be put onto the stage. So for example, they had these versatile houses. You could move them around and you could change them into different interiors. So for example, one house was like the side of a bedroom wall and another one was part of the kitchen. It was just really cleverly done and it was just able to be adapted into any situation or any environment that they needed, which was perfect. And I also really Really loved the contrast in the lighting and the sets as well so when it was like an ordinary day on ordinary street they had very dusky gray palettes very musty and just dull colors however when it was like a utopian situation or it was like a dream or a fantasy they used bright colors and it was just really colorful really saturated and the colors were really rich as well and i really think that the lighting benefited and supported that with the set i just thought the combination together was just perfect and i just really liked that contrast so I just wanted to put that in there. Right, so yes, the cast. So I really liked this mixed bag because there are a lot of RSC alumni. There are quite a few people from Matilda and other works that have been in Stratford. But there are also lots of debuts. And what a thing to say, like your debut in a professional 
theatre job is with the RSC company and they're quite up there so to say that you have been on an RSC stage as your debut must be the best feeling in the world but the company as a whole had so much energy and enthusiasm and you just fell in love with everyone I really loved that the children had opportunity for a lot of dialogue those kids right the children I was watching them and in all honesty I was like right can you please give me your lungs give me your talents because I'm envious right now and you're great they are honestly so talented but I really liked how they had dialogue and they had opportunity for like solos and things like that and um, that's just something that I preached and I really liked it's Charlotte Wakefield I saw Charlotte in the crazy few UK tour in 2018 oh my god it was last no it's two years ago now it was almost two years ago oh <gasps> whoa I just want to say her French accent is admirable but like it it's it again it's a thing that I'm envious of like that woman I think she can just do anything she is honestly a triple quadruple like she she could just basically do anything but I can't lie to you when she started singing I looked at Beth and I was like yes that voice is like butter now i need to get the tea because it's gonna be piping hot so the person i'm gonna be talking about next is rufus hound and rufus hound is very popular he is quite well known he may not be the strongest vocally but his acting totally overshadows that there was no lack of emotion there and he was really consistent with it but i just thought he was fantastic i also want to quickly touch up on Evine and forbes and mason now Evine, i really don't want to butcher his name and i've been listening to any audio that would indicate his name in some way but I can't find it and I really don't want to ruin his surname so I will place his name on the screen and I'm so sorry I just don't want to get it wrong so I want to talk about Avine and I also want to talk about Forbes Mason so Raj is a shop owner on Ordinary Street and he kind of owns a sweet shop a news agent and he's just an all-round good guy and then you've also got Forbes who plays Mr Hawtree and he is the head teacher of Elm Forest School so Mr Hawtree is so strict he is very stern on his code of conduct he is very strict on uniform in particular however Raj is just a new like color of life and he's just such a wonder to the production and he's sort of that person that like I think if you had any troubles you'd want to go to and get advice from but he's also kind of like that distant family member that you've only just got back in touch with and you're just like tell me more tell me more and I just liked the pairing because it was a pairing that you might not have thought would have got on or they might have not have mixed but they do and it's just so interesting to see that dynamic change and it's so interesting to see them come together towards the end i also need to discuss max gill that sounds wrong max jill max jack and jill i'm so sorry i've been again i've been trying to look for interviews and i, ca I can't Hit, like find the pronunciation of the surname i believe it's max gill and i'm kind of hoping it is well look like a muppet so i uh, yeah max i don't think you would have thought this was his debut with the rsc company and i think at all because he like you know when people say oh they're born for the stage i feel like max is a prime example of that he kept that consistency even when he was like in the background of situations he was just so entertaining to watch and you always just kind of you just fell in love with him and you fell in love with his character so he played big mac and he kind of fell in love with denise who was dennis um but you kind of just got to see him kind of come out of his shell, shell a bit more. He had some great one-liners. I'm sorry, but he had the best one-liners. It's like, bonjour, Denise. Would you like a McFlurry? And then he went on with this tangent. He was like, oh yeah, um, I've got, you know, I went shopping and um, I've got like 10 packets of Munch to Munch because, you know, of Raj's deals. And um, I also got a packet of Rolos. Would you like a Rolo? It's just like all this sort of stuff. But yeah, like Max is the one. What was also really interesting was we had quite a few debuts, but we also had quite a few understudies. So Christina, who was originally playing Miss Breslau, she was played by Cilia Sylvia. I, I do wish she had more stage time. I wish she had more chance to have a bit more so because whenever there were like counter melodies 
bang, she came in and it just sort of like erupted. And that was quite similar to other cast members as well. But Cydia Sylvia, I think she's just got such a strong voice and I just wish that we got to hear it a little bit more. So Cilia and also Hannah, who was the understudy for Lorna, they both like, it was like they weren't debuts at all. It felt like they had been in those roles and they were familiar with the roles for a really long time. So that's also a good sign. Um, but yeah, talking about Hannah, she was a great duo with Grace Wilde who played Louise. So the idea is that they're twins. Uh, so Louise and Lorna are twins, but they're not twins if that makes sense. That Hannah was just filled with confidence and she was kind of like the dominating of the pair. And then you had Grace, who was Louise, and she was just sort of laid back. She was going with the flow. She was like, all right, hello, Mr. Hawtree. And Louise, I just like, there needs to be a group just for Louise. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, Grace uh, just absolutely killed the role in the best way. And um, yeah, her one-liners were great as well. Don't eat my cheese. <laughs> I really hope if you've seen the show you know what I mean because if you haven't seen the show you'll be quite concerned and I understand why you would be. Natasha Lewis also played Darvesh's mum and she was so sweet and she kind of enabled that different point of view especially the different parental points of view. So first of all you had Dennis's dad who was like you shouldn't be wearing dresses you're a boy you should be into football that's the only thing that you should be passionate about but then you had Darvesh's mum and she was like look she was like no Dennis no and then there was this really long pause and you were sort of like please be nice and then she was just like orange it's not your colour and it was just that whew. I was like thank the lord the last people I want to talk about is Laura Cubitt and Ben Thompson so Ben Thompson is the puppeteer pu pu puppeteer he played Oddbot who is the dog and the dog is real so um ben did the puppetry work but then um laura was also training ben for that as well and she was the director of the puppetry work so um laura and ben they must have gone back and really just studied the mannerisms of a dog to begin with because it was just so natural and i just loved the animation of the dog it felt like he just jumped out of the book and i didn't realize just how hard puppetry work is like get me an avenue q because i would just i'd just like to experience that for myself but i just didn't realize how hard puppetry work can be but it was just so convincing it wouldn't have surprised me if that was a real dog if i'm honest but to be honest i think i've sort of covered everything that i've wanted to cover um i just want to say again take advantage of the rush please take advantage of the five pound tickets because this is a show that can't be missed it is rumored that the show is transferring and i really hope it does i hope it comes to london because London just doesn't have any fresh new material from the UK and it would be great to have a show like this in London. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this and I will see you guys very soon. I don't know how to end the video so I'm just gonna stand like this and wait till it cuts.